Calvin, this is Skylar Whitney. I'm in an office building at the corner of 8th and Tucker. The street number is 2929. I'm in the office of a Walter Gantz. He's a private investigator. Raven and I came to see him, and uh, he's dead. He's been murdered, shot, I think. Yeah, all right, we'll be here, don't worry. Bye. Raven, don't touch that stuff. These files are a disaster. Uh, don't touch anything until the police get here. How did you know to put this over the phone? Uh, well, detective movies, how else? Raven! Don't you want to see who had the appointment before ours? What's it say? Page is blank. Oh, Sky. We didn't know very much about him. We didn't even know he was married. Yeah, that's right. It's 2929 8th Street. Look, I don't care if it's your lunch hour, Austin. Just get your magic kits over there pronto. Got another murder case on our hands. Oh, for crying out loud. You know, I left the big city for some peace and quiet in America's heartland. Yeah, tell me about it. So who is it? Some small-time PI by the name of uh, Walter Gantz. So, Chris, you want a written invitation or what, huh? Edge of Night is brought to you by squeezably soft Charmin bathroom tissue. And by Tide. From ice cream to mud, Tide gets it clean. Now you've been torturing that food long enough. What's the matter? All right. I am upset. Mm -hmm. What about? Nance, I hardly see you at all anymore. You see me every night. Oh, yes. When you fall into bed already asleep, or when you gulp a single cup of coffee before disappearing out the front door, it's hardly quality time we're spending together. I took that afternoon off when you came to the theater. One afternoon does not make a marriage. Look at us. The big treat in the middle of the day for me is a hurried plate of Mitzi's cold French fries before you sprint back to the theater. Oh, honey, you're feeling sorry for yourself. You're right. I am, and with good reason. I should think you'd be overjoyed because now I finally found something to get me out of the doldrums. I thought the book was supposed to do that. At least that's what you told me. Honey, I, I feel so vital, so energized every time I go in that theater. You used to feel that way when you came home. <laughs> it's not the same thing. Then explain it to me because I don't understand. Mike, I'm happy. Nancy, I'm not. Well, I, uh, I intend to finish the book, and I intend to keep working on the play. I made a commitment to Gavin, and I'm going to keep it. What about the commitment to me you made 20 years ago? Mike, I'm going to believe that our marriage is strong enough that it can allow me this one pleasure. Excuse me. I have to get back to work. Mike, I... Derek Mallory, I'm sorry it took so long getting back to you, but I've just been swamped here. Not at all, I understand. What can I do for you? Derek, a peculiar fact has come to my attention concerning Nicole Cavanaugh. Concerning her murder? I honestly don't know. Well, what is it? Well, a, f a few days ago, I received a phone call from Shelley Simpson, one of our crime reporters. She told me that the day Nicole was murdered, she was asking several people 
to check their street contacts. She was looking for a man named Dell Emerson. Well, Nicole was looking for Dell Emerson? That name is familiar to you? Familiar? I should say it is. Derek, do you suppose it's connected in any way with Nicole's death? Oh, God, Geraldine, I hope not. Have you met the young man Jody Travis has been seeing lately? Briefly. Well, Dell Emerson is Preacher's father. And I don't understand. Well, I've been looking for Dell Emerson in regard to another crime, but Jody and Preacher, they've been fighting me every step of the way. Detective Stoner? Really? Detective Eagle? We're really getting a workout these days. Yeah, tell it to you, shrink. Scott, be with you. Say. No. Well, come on, Chris. What's wrong? Questioning Gunther Wagner. He came to see you. Walter. Walter Gans is my ex husband. I met Walter when we were both at the police academy. We were married the day we were inducted into the force. We had a baby boy, Matthew. After Matthew was old enough, I returned to active duty. I lucked out, was promoted to detective for my work on two cases. It had nothing to do with luck, Chris. You are good. Anyway, everything happened very fast. I did all right as a detective. Walter remained a uniformed patrol officer. That started to get to him. After a while, he couldn't stand the idea that his wife was better at his chosen profession than he was. Three years later, we were divorced. Chris, you don't have to talk about all this right now. I do. The faster you know it all, the faster you can find out okay. who killed him. Okay, go ahead. Walter transferred to a precinct on the other side of the city. A little while after that, his father died and left him this building. Walter moved to Monticello. For three years, I raised men on my own and tried to keep up my career. Well, considering your record, I'd say you did a hell of a job. A boy needs a father, Calvin. And that city was really getting to me. If there seemed no end to the, the, the filth and dirt that we fought day after day. When this job opportunity came up, I jumped on it. To get out of that place, to have Matt near his father again, it just seemed like the perfect opportunity. But do you have any idea who might want to kill him? No. Well, he told me he was being followed by somebody. He didn't tell me who it was. Some case that he was working on. Oh, God, poor Walter. If he was murdered because somebody thought he knew too much. Oh, Kelvin. He meant well, but he just wasn't good enough of a detective for anyone to worry. Look, I think you should just take the rest of the afternoon off, you know? No. Now, come on, don't argue with me. Just go. Just do it. If I need you for anything, I'll call you. Okay. Hi, Mrs. Carr. You okay? Oh, yeah. Yes, Mitzi, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's none of my business, but, uh, you didn't look like you were having such a hot time over here. Well, I'm just having trouble with the rewrites. He, uh, did you know I was in the play? Oh, yes, yes. Gavin told me. You're, you're playing Daisy. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm also understudying Jody's part. Uh-huh. Yeah. Something's wrong. I can tell these things. Men. 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 You know, they're great at offering support whenever a woman wants to do a little something else in her life. But just let that something, be it um, a second career, a hobby, or whatever, just 
let it detract the slightest bit from his carefully ordered life, and all of a sudden, all that support, all that understanding is right out the window. Sometimes the door, too. And here I am, feeling guilty because I'm happy and doing what I want to do. It just isn't fair. I'll tell you, there's just no rhyme or rhythm to it, is there? Mm. Uh, no. But at least men are not like Darth Vader. The what? Yeah, totally bad. Oh. Yeah. I mean, they do have their uses. Yes, they do, Missy. <laughs> Yeah, Calvin, we hired Gans to track down Spencer. Uh, d uh, despite his limitations, he actually was able to come up with Spencer's trail. So what's that black stuff? Fingerprint powder. Yeah, so where's Varney? Uh, well, unfortunately, we don't know. Apparently, Gans tracked him down to some hotel in town, but Spencer was tipped off somehow. He also seemed to have some sort of underworld contacts that got him a fake passport and got him out of the country. Oh, what's the name of his contacts? I think that that's what Gans was going to tell us this afternoon, but, uh, well, wait a minute now. If despite his limitations, Gantz was able to come up with something on Spencer, then that would make Spencer the number one suspect in the murder, wouldn't it? Either that or the people who helped Spencer escape. I... See... The thought had crossed my mind. Oh, well, I, um, I was just trying to be helpful. Lady, get out of my face, will you? Do you, uh, know something about somebody following Gantz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at first he thought it was us who were having him followed because we were dissatisfied with the progress in the case. But then later on he figured out that there was this other case he was working on. Apparently his only other case. Was well, there no description of whoever it was who was following him? Uh, no, it was just a, a green van with muddy license plates. Oh, terrific. There must be a thousand of those in Monticello. Mm -hmm. Hey, get your hands off me. Hey, you took the words right out of my mouth. Now, do you know anything about this other case he was supposed to be working on? Uh, yeah, well, as a matter of fact, we helped him on it. You helped him? Yeah, we watched a shack for him. You see, there were these two people meeting there. Now, we didn't get a chance to see their faces, but Gantz followed one of them when he left. And the other one, uh, well, uh, the other one, I guess, slipped off when we weren't looking. And you've got no description? Well, the man who stayed had a limp when he walked. And that's, uh, that's all you know about this other case? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Yeah, well, okay, thank you both for your cooperation. You can go now. Okay, well, if there's anything we can do, Calvin... No, just, just, uh, just go home. Please. Mm. Let's go, Ray. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Have a good evening. Detective Stoner, sir, uh, if it wouldn't be too much trouble, would you mind solving one of these murders before there's another one? No progress in E.J. Pond's murder, no progress in the Coles murder, and now another homicide. And where are all your detectives? They are out working on those cases. The mayor wants results, Derek. He said if the election were held tomorrow, we'd all be out on the streets looking for work. And I agree with him. I'm working on it, Mike. Prove it. Arrest somebody. Detective Stoner. Mr. Carr. Sounds like he's really out for blood. And with good reason. But I don't like all the murders taking place in this town. Keeps the tourists away. I don't think this is exactly fair. I mean, who do I get to ball out? Well, I'm afraid that's the way the system works, Calvin. The mayor dumps on the district attorney. The district attorney dumps on the chief of police. And I dump on everybody. It's a tried and true system that has made American law enforcement what it is today. I'm tired. Well, then snap out of it. Look, how, how am I supposed to go out and catch all these criminals without even a partner? Huh? What's, what's going on between you two now? Nothing between us. Well, then what is it? Nothing much. Just that this latest homicide was Chris's ex-husband. Mommy, Mommy. Hey, little fella. Let a girl catch her breath, will you? <laughs> Nellie and I watched a scary movie on TV today. You did, huh? Yeah, and I am under the chair. Oh, no. <laughs> there are days I wish I could do that. How much, Nellie? $7.50, Miss Egan, as always. <laughs> Nellie, you are the one true bargain left in this world. <laughs> I enjoy looking out for him. He's a wonderful little boy. I'm wonderful. Oh, well, don't let that go to your head, you. <laughs> Thanks, Nellie. Same time tomorrow? Same time. Okay. Matthew? My daddy. Ray 
Raven, will you listen to me? I have been listening to you. Listen, there is nobody left to help us. We've got to help ourselves now. I don't now. want any part of it. You want to get the diamonds back? Yes, I do. Well, look, Gantz was on to Spencer. Gantz has been murdered, which means that all his leads are gone. So let the police handle it. The police, the police. You're the one who wanted to hire the private investigator because you didn't have any faith in the police. Well, now he's dead. Which is exactly why we should pick up where he left off. Which is exactly why we shouldn't. You think I want to be murdered for the same reason he was? Look, I know that there may be an element of danger, but I would never in a million years involve you in anything dangerous, Then honey. why are you considering it? Because it seems like it's the thing to do, that's why. Now I mean, you're what contradicting the... yourself. Well, I know, but it's... My dears, hello. Oh, Raven, it was so quiet around here after you left. I'm sorry, are we disturbing you? <laughs> no, right. it's all right. Actually, I have to admit to being a little lonely. Are you all settled in? Mm -hmm. Well, since we didn't have much left, it didn't take long to unpack. I want to make you both feel very welcome and tell you you must stay as long as you like. Well, thank you, Geraldine. That's very generous. That's a lovely gown. I hope you didn't wear that in honor of our arrival. <laughs> no, I'm dining out this evening. With whom? An English gentleman named Giles Etheridge. Etheridge? Etheridge? I don't see him. No, he's only here on business, Skylar. You wouldn't know him. What'd you do? Pick him up in a bar? <laughs> no, Raven, of course not. I'm just kidding. Where did you meet him? He bumped into my car, or his driver did. Do you think I'm being awfully daring by accepting an invitation on so short an acquaintance? Well, maybe a little. Oh, come on, Skylar. She's your aunt, not your daughter, going out on her first date. Geraldine has been around. Uh, thank you, my dear. Actually, I think it's a wonderful idea. Well, I'm really looking forward to it. Mr. Etheridge is really a very interesting man. There's no reason to hide anything anymore, please. Matthew, we have a visitor. Can you shake hands? Well, hello, Matthew. Who are you? My name's Derek. Oh, would you like some coffee, Chief? Yeah, if it's no trouble. Are you an Indian chief? <laughs> well, uh, kind of, actually. Your mom is one of my braves. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, you go and play now, okay? Okay. That's a well-behaved young man. Thank you. Police discipline. Something his mother could have used a little more of, I think. Look, Chris, you don't have to talk if you don't want to. I, I do want to. After all this time, it'll be a relief. All right. Against departmental regulations, I was supplying Walter with privileged information. All right, now I'm beginning to understand. At first, I only wanted to help him find a possible case he could work on. When I came to Monticello, he hadn't had a case in six months. So one day, I called Walter to tell him there wasn't anything he could do on the Venefra case. Calvin heard my end of the conversation. And this is what started the rift between you and Calvin that no one wanted to explain to me? Yes, but Calvin isn't at all to blame. And that's what made you run headstrong after Everett and get yourself shot. Well, I had to prove I wasn't a spy for Venefra, although getting myself shot wasn't part of the idea. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You know, Walter really was a terrible detective. Terrible. He was so caught up in, in the romantic ideal of the profession that he got from reading books. But he was a good man. And a good father. And I miss him. The larder is well stocked, so help yourselves. I shouldn't be too late. Have a good time. I leave this room for five minutes and come back to find you both deep in gloom. Now, believe me, all of this is going to work out very well. 
It's not that, Geraldine. We had uh, something of a shock today. What is it? The detective that we hired to track Spencer Varney, Walter Gantz, uh, discovered his trail. But that's marvelous news. Yeah, well, then he called us to tell us some news, and when we got to his office... Uh... He had been murdered. Murdered? And we don't know if it's because of our case or because of this other case that he had been working on. If only we knew what that other case was. Yeah. My dears, I'm afraid the other case is mine.